There is some information that you're going to want to know about magazines and newsletters before you start writing for them. So we're going to cover some of the differences and similarities between them today, and we're going to talk about what they look like both online and in print to give you some idea of the format and so you can think visually about how to write for them before you begin. So there's a purpose and an audience to always keep in mind. They are both outreach publications that serve a very specific audience. They um, deliver a strategic message for their organization. They serve a very well-defined group that shares a common interest, and they can be delivered as both print or online electronic publications. How are they different? Newsletters um, are some, they are produced with much fewer resources so they can come out more frequently. They can cover more timely information. Space is limited, so t stories tend to be short, and the writing is typically straight news style in the inverted pyramid. Magazines um, have a longer production cycle, longer shelf life. Um, readers expect more entertainment and in-depth coverage of topics, and the writing can be straight news, feature stories, or take various forms of short pieces. So let's take a look. So a print and an online newsletter is essentially um, a PDF version of the print piece that lives on the company's website and can be delivered through mail um, or through a web link. And here's an example. So this is a newsletter for Young Achievers. This was produced for a print distribution um, it's an eight-page newsletter, full color. And then once it was printed and distributed to the members, it was put online on their website as a PDF. And they can send people to it. They can send it out in an email. Um, and that's how they're handling the electronic distribution of this. So, one, so things to keep in mind. Um, you can see that the length of the story is pretty long. Um, it's a three-page story. There's a lot of visuals. There are a lot of photos that help tell the story. Um, there's design that's used, columns and um, pull quotes or call-outs. This is called a pull quote or a call-out right here. And um, this is a spread when there's two pages side by side open and, the, and um, especially if they uh, share a design that creates a hole between the two. So an email program newsletter is when a company subscribes to a service such as Constant Contact or My Emma and they send out their messaging through this service to reach their customers and readers. This service can cost, it's a monthly subscription and it does a lot of things for companies to save them time. It automates a lot. It automates data entry of um, email lists. It makes sure that the lists are scrubbed and clean. Um, if there's any bounces, they, you, you get notified of bounce back so that you can clean your list. Um, it offers you some templates so you can plug in your content, your, um, your writing, your, your photographs. And then you can have like a pretty ready, uh, a pretty ready-made um, communication to go out to your customers um, without an, a lot of investment of time or expertise. So here's an example of what that in a uh, smartphone or a tablet. It has a nice scroll. It looks very clean, um, and that's just the format um, that they're offering. So things to keep in mind about these, um, they tend to be very short, so this, there's a lot of stories they try to fit as much as they can on the real estate of the monitor screen. There's a vertical orientation of the layout. Um, there is some design limitation in what you can do within the templates. Um, so you see it's pretty straightforward. It's very basic actually with some copy and some um, some photos and like this one here has a background color. Whoops, 
There's also embedded links that take you to related information and or to actions that they want you to take. So the print magazine still remains the, the primary medium for magazines, which can be distributed weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, and many titles are available. You can see from this example here, um, it's a whole family of print and digital versions. So this is Time Magazine, and it's offered still as a print edition, and then also as um, a digital edition for iPads, smartphones, and laptops. And you can see the cost is not terribly different. It's $30 for just the print version, which is 52 issues, or $40, $10 more to get all access to their digital content. So what you need, to, what you want to notice about print magazines is that there's a lot of um, short and long form writing throughout the books. The visual presentation is very important. Um, there's as much of a budget put uh, together for art and design and photography as there is for editorial, which is the writing. So there's usually an art budget, an editorial budget, and then a production budget, which covers paper, printing, and postage. The other thing that's kind of important to know is that many of these magazines do work with freelancers a lot, so it's a really great way to start a portfolio if you want to get in um, as a, uh, a periodicals or a magazine writer. So the digital edition magazine is simply a replica of the printed version and it can extend the frequency and the reach of the publication because the limitations of postage and physical resources, for example, paper, um, the paper costs for printing, and the um, delivery charges for trucking the or, or transporting the publication, those are gone. Um, with a digital edition, you're simply, again, just presenting a virtual version of the book, and it is um, very similar to the actual print piece. This magazine is an annual magazine produced by Suffolk University, and this is a digital edition. The vendor is Nextbook up here. You can click through it. Um, you can turn off that page flipping sound. Actually, we'll just turn that off. I'll do a few more then you can see in my turn. You can actually click through to a specific story. I'm going to turn that off. Okay. So again, it's like the print version smaller. The only way to read it is to zoom. Click and zoom in and scroll. So things to keep in mind about the digital edition magazine. The design is not that different. It's pretty much the same. So it's designed on the vertical axis like the printed version. It requires zooming and scrolling to read it. It has embedded audio, video, and animation, along with interactive features, all basically depending on which video, which um, publishing vendor that you choose. There's so many out there, and they all have different interfaces and functionalities. So you just want to try different ones. So here, what I've done is this picture behind is the spread in the magazine. This is the right-hand page over here. Before you open up this little icon, once you open up the icon that says there's video content embedded here, then this window pops up and you can watch this video. Similarly here, we have a full-page ad um, about Senegal, a video prompt. You click on it and it opens this window. Here's an example of audio. 
embedded in the magazine. So here we have a very short piece on a biology professor. This is about an anatomy and physiology um, course that he was teaching. And there's always a lot more that you gather in research than you can use in your publication. Um, so word count directs how much you can actually say. So if you have some really good quotes, if you have some leftover um, data and you've recorded it, a lot of people didn't. I was surprised. You can find this a way to put it in here. That this is the most technologically savvy generation, but I mean, there's no one how to use Facebook, and then there's no one how to use the tools to make something. And uh, many of the students hadn't weren't familiar with the podcast were, so I actually had to kind of go through and explain, you know, like this half the stuff that's on my iPod isn't is all stuff that's free and it's. You know, it's like intellectual content that people put out there because they're interested and they like talking about it. And um, that was, I think that was, I think that was new for a lot of students. And, like, and I don't know if they see themselves as producers of that kind of content because they're still kind of learning what the thing is in the first place. Here's what video looks like. So in this case, this is a spread about the art school at Suffolk University and this student here you can see the amount of content very short maybe 125 130 words um, and there's more information to say and we happen to have a video that could complement the story very well <laughs> I started out with a degree in business marketing and then felt it was kind of dry, so I wanted something more creative. I've always had an artistic side to me growing up and just kind of wanted to follow the business route, but also incorporate art, so that's where I felt graphic design was. Now, online magazines are different. Um, they are not a replica version of the print piece. They actually are designed to take advantage of the web browser experience. Here's what that looks like. This is an award-winning online magazine. The departments are across the top as menu buttons and navigation. So you can see the sign looks very much like a website or a blog. They have SoundCloud content, interviews, poetry, long form. What I want to show you is the, let's look at the long reads. There are some ads on the right and some related um, links, but if you actually look at the reading experience, it's pretty uninterrupted by advertising. So what to notice about online magazines is that they are very much like a website. Um, you can kind of tell that length here really doesn't matter. So a word count probably really isn't an issue. Um, it's a very simple layout. There's not a lot of the artistic layout that you can see in some um, print pieces, but it's clean and it's about reading. So what's next? That's it for what we're talking about here, um, so that you can get some understanding of the form and the formats. And then the next presentation, you'll get to see what you need to learn about the mechanics of writing for these two different kinds of publications. And that's it.